Good afternoon, little fifth graders. Today we're going to do a quick lesson on multiplying and dividing four digit and two digit numbers. Uh, these are really important skills for fifth graders to know. You're going to be tested on them in the spring and you're expected to be able to do these problems independently. Now I know a lot of you are going to struggle with this because you don't have good command of your math facts. So if you find yourself in that category, you need to take your iPad and you need to do one of those multiplication apps so you can learn your facts. There's also lots of websites you can go to to learn your facts because you have to be able to do problems like 7 times 8 equals 56 and 9 times 9 equals 81. You have to be able to do those instantly without uh, any pause or hesitation. All right, multiplication and division are related math operations in the multiplication and division are what we call inverse operations. If you need to think of a simpler word for inverse, think of the word opposite. So they are opposite operations. Opposite operations or slash inverse operations mean they undo each other. You know, so think of the simple example. Subtraction undoes. Addition is undone by subtraction. Subtraction is undone by addition. Multiplication is undone by division and division is undone by multiplication. Opposite operations. Multiplication is one of the four basic operations and it's represented by the the X or the time symbol. Sometimes it's also represented by the little uh, asterisk or star symbol. Multiplication is really repeated addition of a unit. Now there are two terms that we need to know. Factors, those are the numbers being multiplied. And then product. Product is the answer to a multiplication pro problem. So sometimes in your test it's going to ask you to find the product. So you're going to need to know that, oh, to solve this I need to multiply. 3 times 8 equals 24. 3 and 8 are the factors. 24 is the product. So make sure you know what a factor is and what a product is. Division is is creating squads for gym class and I'm just saying it this way so you can get a picture of what division is. Actually you want your squads in gym class to be equal sized. Division is deciding how many slices of pizza each person gets. So if you have a group of friends over and you're going to have pizza, everybody's probably going to want to eat the same amount. So you got to break that into equal proportions. Division is how many are in a group or think of division as fair shares because everybody wants to get the same amount. You know, this is especially true if you had an amount of money. Like if you had $20 and you were dividing it between five people. One person wouldn't want to get stuck with one dollar while somebody gets more. So division is fair shares. The mnemonic for the steps of division is does McDonald's sell cheeseburgers? So if you can remember this short goofy question, you're going to remember the steps of division. So the first thing you have to do is divide and then you to do this you'll multiply so you'll find a number, you'll subtract that number then you're going to compare your answer that you get after subtracting with the number that you're dividing by. If the number, if your answer is still bigger than the number that you're dividing by, you need to keep repeating the steps. So you'll bring down, you'll divide, multiply, subtract, compare. And you keep doing that until you get to zero or you get a number that is smaller than your divisor. Division is a math operation that separates a number into equal size groups. We mentioned that before. Division, this is also review, is the inverse or what's the word for inverse? Can anybody tell me that? Oh, I'm seeing some hands in the air. Yeah, you in the front. Opposite, right. Inverse operations are opposite operations. So the opposite operation of division is multiplication. Dividend is the quantity that's being divided, so that would be the number that goes inside the box. The divisor is the number that is going to go to the left of the box when you divide. And quotient is your answer to a division problem, and you would put that on top of the box. All right, let's continue. 
in division, we have the quotient, which is the answer. The quotient is not always a whole number. Sometimes two numbers are not divisible, and you'll have what's called a remainder. The quotient can be a whole number, so there's nothing left over, or the quotient can be a whole number with a remainder. Now, sometimes we show this remainder as a fraction. Other times we need to keep going and we'll list it as a decimal. So there are ways to handle these division problems when we have a leftover piece. The remainder, as I said before, is the quantity that's left over after dividing. Sometimes we just leave it that way. R4, so we had a remainder of 4. Or R17, we had a remainder of 17. Sometimes we show it as a fraction, like if I had 3 left over and I was dividing by 5, my fraction would be 3 fifths. Out of 5 parts, I have 3 left over. Sometimes further division is done to show the decimal part, and then sometimes you're going to be asked with this decimal part either to round up or round down. So we have to do some rounding sometimes with the remainder. Divisible is a number that can be divided by another number with no remainder. 49 divided by 7, that's an example of divisibility because 7 times 7 is 49. So if I divided 49 by 7, I'd have 7 and nothing left over. 56 divided by 7 is 8, so that's another example of divisibility. I didn't have anything left over. 24 divided by 5, now that's not divisible because I would have a leftover piece. So my answer is not a whole number. Remainders, as I said, is the quantity that's left over. Oops, we did this one. I pushed that wrong button there. Okay, so let's move on. You see I have a fraction here. This horizontal line is a fraction bar, and the fraction bar means division. So if you have this and you're asked to turn it into a division problem, this is what you need to do. First draw your house of division. The number 3 goes inside the box, so this is called my dividend, the number that is being divided. My divisor is 8, that's what I'm dividing it by. And then uh, if I carry out the work, my quotient, my answer, would be placed right there. So. That's about it for this first part of the lesson. I'm going to do a part two to this lesson, and in part two, we're actually going to do some multiplication problems, and we're going to do some division problems.